What's up, Psychedelic Spotlight? It's your boy James coming at you with a brand new episode of the Psych Business Roundup, a segment where we cover the most important news stories of the week when it comes to investing in psychedelic medicines. To start, we're going to be looking at Algernon Pharmaceuticals, ticker symbol AGNPF on the OTC markets and AGN on the Canadian CSE. Algernon is planning a clinical trial using DMT dimethyltryptamine to treat acute strokes. Now I know what some of you guys are probably thinking. Using psychedelics to treat acute strokes might seem a little bit wacky, but the company actually has some preclinical evidence. In an in vitro study, rat primary cortical neurons were treated with low levels of DMT, or in other words, subperceptual doses, over a period of time. And the researchers actually found that at six hours, there was a 40% increase in the mean total length of processes and branches per cell. Now to give you guys a little bit of context, for each hour that a stroke is left untreated in a human, it causes a person to lose about as many neurons as they would in four years of natural aging. And this actually makes it the leading cause of disability in adults. So if Algernon can reverse this with DMT, then it would be a game changer for millions upon millions of people. Dr. Rick Strassman, advisor to Algernon and author of the book DMT the Spirit Molecule, said this. These exciting in vitro data provide further evidence supporting the use of DMT in stroke, and strongly suggest that low doses and short exposure times are feasible. It's important to remember that this is still in preclinical phases. We can't get ahead of ourselves just yet. But the company is planning on launching a phase one clinical trial in the UK in January. They just had a meeting with regulators in Britain where they received positive feedback so it looks like this trial is actually set to begin soon. Since it's classified as a phase 1 2A trial, Algernon will be able to move quickly to phase 2A once they complete the first portion of this study. Again, not to count our chickens before they hatch, but if psychedelics could make the transition from just treating mental health conditions to treating health conditions, then this would open up much more potential for the psychedelics industry. Again guys, as I love the potential for DMT, I find it to be the most exciting psychedelic compound. I personally am wishing Algernon all the best and will be following this study closely. Next up, we're going to be looking at a brand new microdosing study that just released results. Among its authors were Pamela Kreiskow, a member of the Clinical Advisory Board of Numinous, Kim Kuypers, Principal Investigator on Studies sponsored by MindMed, including their microdosing studies, and Paul Stamets, an influential psychedelics advocate. The study had 8,703 participants, about half of whom were microdosing and half of whom were not. It found that those in the microdosing groups had lower levels of depression, anxiety, and stress, and they were also less likely to use or abuse alcohol or tobacco. However, it must be stated that the differences between the two groups, while statistically significant, were nevertheless considered small. Meaning even if we could take this study at face value, more on that in a second, the results, while positive, indicate that the benefits of microdosing might be somewhat limited. It is also important to note that there were many potential biases inherent within this study. The participants self-selected into the study, there was no control group, meaning that the placebo effect might have been running rampant, and also those who were microdosing were taking different drugs and following different regimens. Plus, the app that people had to download to fill out the surveys were limited only to iPhone users, and I have no idea how that would play into any potential biases, but I'm sure there would be some skewing happening there. Look, all I'm trying to say here is that this means we can't extrapolate too much from the results and all we can use them for is to justify larger scaled, controlled clinical trials so that we have ever better information. Nevertheless, it is exciting to see such positive results from a microdosing study and I hope to see more better controlled studies in the future. If you enjoyed this episode, please the algorithm overlords with your like, subscribe and comment. Let us know down in the comment section below whether you believe that DMT can actually be used to treat strokes or whether you think that's a little bit out there. I want to hear your opinions. And if we still got you here at the end of the episode, don't forget to go check out psychedelicspotlight.com. They cover all of the psychedelic news that you need to see in a holistic manner. You get your business news, you get your cultural news, you get your scientific news. And while you're on the website, don't forget to check out their newsletter. That way you can get all the news that you want to see directed directly to your inbox every single week. I'm James from the Psychedelic Investor and I will see you next time.